Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I thank you and, and <clears throat> thank you, honorable members. Mr. Speaker, the Member of Parliament for Castries East and Prime Minister of St. Lucia presented the Appropriation Bill 2023-24 to honorable members to our country on Tuesday, 25th, 2023. He presented truth, not manufactured untruths. He gave evidence, not wishful thinking. He handed the evidence of growth to the parliament and laid out for all to hear and see a clear path for continued prosperity, a clear path for shared prosperity, a clear path for inclusion, and also a clear path for shared responsibility. The Member of Parliament for Castries is, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the St. Lucia Liberal Party, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, is the Minister of Finance and the leader for this time, Mr. Speaker. He is the leader for the times. I wholeheartedly support the report and proposals which were presented by the Prime Minister in the Appropriations Bill 2023-2024 under the theme Health and Security, Pillars of Sustainability. I am indeed pleased, Mr. Speaker, that my constituents of VA4 North will benefit from the vision and programs of the government wherever they are. Fishers of Savants Bay and Viewfort who will get the rebate of a, a dollar per gallon of gas, repairs to the facilities, training for fishers, safety equipment, students from VA4 North who will get their laptops, and parents who will save thousands of dollars, those visiting the health facilities with improvements to be done, the elderly who will benefit from improved health care and the golden program, the youth from VFO North, the youth economy, the small enterprise um, sector, the tax amnesty, the support to honey producers, for example, the Horizon Brothers from VFO North, the, the, the Yelp honey producers, and others, people like Josh Ross from Grace, will be smiling, Mr. Speaker. Value added in cassava and coconuts, the St. Jude Reconstruction Project, the Iwanora Airport Reconstruction Project, the Blue Economy Project, the removal of VAT on building materials. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, this is the Prime Minister for the times, Mr. Speaker. He is the Prime Minister for the times. A while ago, Mr. Speaker, the member for Schwazel asked whether I should respond or whether I can respond to the fact he noted, well, I don't know if it's a fact, but he noted that many young people from his constituency and in other places are suddenly dying, and he believes clearly that there's a problem. I will say clearly, Mr. Speaker, that what we are seeing in terms of the medical records, it shows a clear pattern of increased mortality, a clear pattern of increased challenges in healthcare with people who have non-communicable diseases. It is also important to say that our health professionals continue to do the research and continue to ensure that we gather the data so that if there are any clear trends, these will be reported. I also wish to say to the member for Chozel, Mr. Speaker, that not only in St. Lucia, but around the world, there is a growing trend of what you call long COVID, where it is being described that people who have recovered from the COVID-19 um, disease seem to be coming up and presenting new challenges. He spoke about pharmaceuticals, and this has been an issue for a long time. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the supply chain issues stemming out of the COVID-19 pandemic and the enormous debt which we incurred to suppliers, we are negotiating payments on these debts. And again, Mr. Speaker, he was in the last government and he should know about the bills which they left to pay to pharmaceutical companies. We are certainly um, paying down those, those debts and I can say to you, Mr. Speaker, that from time to time, we do have shortage of some pharmaceuticals, but these matters have been addressed, and they have been addressed. Mr. Speaker, the leadership of our ministry 
anchored by the permanent secretary, Ms. Jenny Daniel, has been guided by the strategic policies of our government in the implement implementation of projects in our ministry. It is very clear, Mr. Speaker, that we have to guide this healthcare system and the economy from the devastation of the COVID-19 pandemic. As we know, the healthcare sector is one of the key engines and drivers of economic growth. We saw what happened with the COVID-19 pandemic. And as the COVID-19 pandemic wanes, we realize that the strengthening of primary health care is a major priority. We also note, Mr. Speaker, that risk factors such as sedentary lifestyles, smoking, alcohol abuse, body mass index, and so on, have not reflected any signs of improvement over the years. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, it continues to be of major concern to all of us in the ministry, especially the team led by Doc Dr. Shana Sir. It is, Mr. Speaker, a strategy to tackle the risk factors which will involve an approach which incorporates the entire population. Mr. Speaker, on page 66 of the Prime Minister's address, a levy of 2.5% on goods and services except food, medicines, medical and security equipment, it will be placed for healthcare and security investments. I am pleased that some of the revenues which will come out of this levy will go directly into healthcare investment. Mr. Speaker, here is what we face. When we are sick, when our family is sick, when we have an unfortunate accident, we take them to the St. Jude Hospital, to the team led by Dr. Natrum, or we take them to the OKEU, to the team led by Dr. Lisa Charles, or to the Denry Hospital, to the team led by Nurse Yolanda Alcindor, or to the Sufre Hospital, to the team led by Nurse Sadhu Alexander. What happened? We want to ensure when we take our relatives to these hospitals and to the health centers that we get the best medical professionals available. We are expecting to get the best care and we are hoping that the hospitals will have the supplies and trained staff. It is the responsibility of the government to do its very best to keep focus on this priority and allocate resources to our hospitals as best as it can. We are a responsible government, Mr. Speaker. We put people first, and providing financial resources to our public hospitals is our priority. Therefore, revenues from the 2.5% levy for health and security will assist us. Mr. Speaker, let me give you an idea of what we face. Two hospitals struggling for years to meet operational costs and starved of capital investment for innovation and modernization. What do we do as a government? Continue to fight and battle and say we don't have money? No. Let us look at what's happening at St. Jude, Mr. Hospital. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Let's look at what's happening at St. Jude. The fire and conditions at the stadium have made the situation worse. But when Ms. Lydia Atkins, the CEO at St. Jude Hospital, and Mr. Elevik, who is heading the board, look at their situation, you have to call for more resources to the St. Jude Hospital. Last year, they served over 44,000 people. Before COVID-19, St. Jude Hospital served over 50,000 people. An average of 16,500 people accessing specialty clinic every year and 33% increase in admissions between 2015 and 2019. If you look at the co average cost per patient between 2019 and 2020, it jumped from $585 per patient to $719 if it's not subsidized. Now, Mr. Speaker, the cost per patient at St. Jude Hospital, it moved from $949 around 2020 to $1,173 now on subsidies. You have 400 staff members. Posting negative cash balance balances in 2021, 1.8 million, 1.3 million in 2022. The collection rates have gone down. Prior to COVID-19, they were collecting 53% of revenues from services. Right now, they're only collecting 23%. Critical equipment needs of $3 million. 20 nurses needed. 
bed capacity over 100 percent at the stadium and the cost of operation is over 33 million dollars annually and over the years last year year before a subvention of 21 million dollars what are we supposed to do what are we going to do if we want proper health care i the 2.5 percent levy will assist the healthcare sector and you will see in a while what we are doing directly to assist the St. Jude Hospital. If you look at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, Turning Point, the Mental Wellness Center and so on, Dr. James, Doc, Dr. Dexter James, the CEO, and Dr. Lisa Charles, when they, when they look at the responsibilities, and Ms. Reynolds, who is the head of the, of the board, when they look at their responsibilities, they realize that over 50,000 people were served in 2022. Surgeries, admissions, accident and emergency, 95 people in dialysis. The cost of operation of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex, conservatively, Mr. Speaker, is at 95 million and counting. $8 million in capital costs, in capital expenses they're budgeting for this year. The current recurrent budget, Last year, they got $52.2 million, and $48 million of that is absorbed in salaries. And what do they collect? $5 million in services every month at the OKU, Millennium Heights Medical Complex. But they only collect $400,000 per month. So they're providing $5 million in services, but they're only collecting from user fees, people who pay the hospital, and so on, only $400,000. So you could well imagine the challenge with the Owen King EU Hospital and the Millennium, the, the, the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. So what do you do? What do you do? You just stay and keep scratching your head? This government has a clear path, step by step, phase by phase, to ensure that the hospitals, the public hospitals and facilities get adequately financed. I heard the member from Miku South many times talking about health insurance. Oh, how are we going to finance health care? We started some health insurance. I want him to bring to the House the evidence with documents which showed that they had completed negotiations with any health insurance company and that they had a solid health insurance plan for St. Lucia. He cannot do it. He cannot do it. So how did we address these challenges over the year? Our goal, Mr. Speaker, is to advance universal health coverage and to make that goal part of all the workings of the ministry. So everywhere in the ministry, we are talking about universal health coverage. While at the same time, urgently improving conditions of work of our staff, urgently doing all that we can to improve patient care, Mr. Speaker. What did we do during last year to assist? At St. Jude, we know that we have started the refurbishment, rehabilitation, and we will complete the St. Jude Hospital at OG. But while we are at the stadium, a lot of work was done. Reconstruction of the East Wing, rehabilitation of the inventory warehouse, rehabilitation of the triage booths, rehabilitation of emergency um, technicians' office, works ongoing to rede redesign and rehabilitate the emergency room resuscitation bay, rehabilitation of outpatient clinic, redesign and rehabilitation of the eye clinic and bacteriology department, supply of furniture for departments and those kinds of things. Provide support through donation of major equipment including ventilators, lab equipment and, a, and other machines, Mr. Speaker. This is what we did last year. It is very important to note, Mr. Speaker, that in November of 2022, we started work on the St. Jude Hospital at OG and we are very confident that we are going to complete this hospital to remove the people and the staff from the stadium. Very, very confident, Mr. Speaker. The 2.5% levy will contribute an investment to the government's efforts at providing quality health care under the Universal Health Care Program. The Owen King E Hospital, while we speak about all the challenges, what happened last year? I can spend a whole night telling you about what happened at Owen King EU Hospital. We have lots of challenges there, Mr. Speaker. And we have a lot of complaints about the accident and emergency department. And so the, the, the hospital has adopted a new model of care with the board and Dr. James and Dr. Lisa Charles and the whole team. 
a new model of care and they are working on it, um, consulting with St. Lucia Diabetes and Hypertension Hypertensive Association, Blind Welfare Association, St. Lucia Cancer Society, Alzheimer's and, and Dementia, St. Lucia Renal Association, all of consultations to ensure that we take the views of all of them into consideration in our work. We have spoken about accreditation and the hospital is working towards that, Mr. Speaker. The hospital is also working on a new model of hospital financing. And you will hear a lot about it. The hospital is establishing a trust so that it depends less on the government for direct support. The accident and emergency department, improvements are happening there to, to shorten the waiting time. There's, there are service enhancements and a move towards a 24-hour hospital. Mr. Speaker, the challenges at our hospitals are strongly connected to the challenges and services at our health centers or our, at our wellness centers. Our teams in the region, Mr. Speaker, all around have been hearing about universal health care in improving quality all around the ministry and throughout our various departments. So from, you, you can start from the respiratory hospital, from Miss Nancy Francis, and you can go to Nurse Julieta Cassius. You can also speak to Nurse Suraj, Kofni Suraj, the Chief Nursing Officer, and Nurse Tekla Jabatis, the Immunization Manager. All of them working together to ensure that we improve services. And what have we done, Mr. Speaker? We have engaged what we call public welfare assistance at the Castries and Viewfort Wellness Centers, in addition to what we had at the, the respiratory hospital. And that is an idea coming straight from the Prime Minister, and I want to thank him for that, Mr. Speaker. So public welfare assistance at the Castries and Viewfort Wellness Centers, and we are going to spread these services so that these people can assist the nurses and the professionals to have some welfare service. Medical assistance, Mr. Speaker, $1.4 million last year in medical assistance. $1.2 million to services locally, and a total of $144,985 overseas. And if you speak to Dr. Glensford Joseph, who handles the medical assistance, he can tell you the number of requests we have. Mr. Speaker, we are working with our friends in Martinique and also in Guadeloupe, and the discussions are preliminary. We have had a few meetings, and we are going to work with the, the Department of External Affairs, the Ministry of External Affairs, our Permanent Secretary, Ms. Daniel, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sean Belma George, in consultation with Council Alison Joseph, and also the Department of External Affairs. We are going to finalize the memorandum of understanding between St. Lucia and the French departments. In fact, Mr. Speaker, in June, we are hoping to meet with them in Martinique and Guadeloupe to look at the possibilities to strengthen the relationship between Martinique and Guadeloupe. All of this, Mr. Speaker, in an effort to bolster service to our people. Non-communicable diseases, Mr. Speaker. And if you talk to Dr. Shana Sear and her team, you will know, Mr. Speaker, that they are working hard on Know Your Numbers campaign. What about your blood pressure? What about your sugar? And so on. They are working hard on that. And I don't need to tell you about the St. Lucia Moves initiative. You see it happening in different businesses now. And it is just an effort to sensitize our people to move, that they need to move a little more, Mr. Speaker. We also are working on the performance-based financing. And Mr. Neam Jabatis is there very strong assisting us in this regard. Mr. Speaker, in primary care, we wanted to ensure that we strengthen our weekly surveillance reports. And the office of Dr. Sharon Belma George, the CMO, continues to strengthen the processes. If you say hi to Dr. Michel Fosois, the, our epidemiologist, Mr. Speaker, working very hard to ensure that our processes are fine-tuned so that we can get the correct research that the member for Schuzel spoke about. And health promotion. And Ms. Nat Mrs. Natasha lloyd Felix and team working very hard. And now Ms. Nadege Smith-Lambert doing even additional work with our health promotion. 
and you can see an increase in our health promotion in the coming out of the ministry. And when we speak about diet and nutrition, we've been working with the Ministry of Education and Mistress Lisa Hunt and her team, um, together with the, the CMO's office, working on the school's nutrition policy, but of course with the Ministry of Education. And we know what happened with the sugary beverages. It is something we are continuing to discuss and hope that our parents and, the, and we, we can work something out together. We believe we needed to have more consultation and the Ministry of Education is working very hard with us on that. Mr. Speaker, you can't speak about primary health care if you don't talk about substance abuse. And we know the launch of our national drug strategy is coming, Mr. Speaker, and especially post-pandemic. We are seeing a lot of issues and this is something we are working on and the program will be launched very soon. Soon. Mr. Speaker, primary health care, although we are talking about universal health care, Mr. Speaker, primary health care really is the, the foundation and the skeleton of universal health care. And I don't know if you know somebody by Dr. Ephraim Le Lecote, Mr. Speaker, and her team. And here is what they did last year for the first time. Because of our focus on elderly affairs, they launched a wonderful program of mobile dental elderly programs at Comfort Bay in Viewfort, at Cornerstone, St. Lucy's Home, Marion Home, Johnson's Home, Adelaide Home, Mother Teresa Home, and for the retirees. 221 elderly persons were provided care, 218 cleanings, and a number of extractions, Mr. Speaker. I am very proud of Dr. Ephraim and her team, Mr. Speaker, and the programs that they are providing for the first time to our elderly homes, and that will continue, Mr. Speaker. They will start a program for the grade Ks and, and grade 1 students, Mr. Speaker, because Dr. Ephraim received a grant, and Mr. Speaker, she has been made a fellow of the International College of Dentists, and they continue to work very hard. Recently, Mr. Speaker, we had the military, the U.S. military Lamat mission, and that was a huge success. Our team members put together a plan, and we know it happened before, but what we saw before, we ensured that we would not see people on the tents waiting from 3 o'clock in the morning and so on. We had a system where people um, called in to make appointments and so forth, and this was very, very successful, Mr. Speaker. The U.S. professionals worked alongside our professionals, and 230 patients were seen for surgeries, some of them major surgeries, and they are praising this. Our infection, so let me thank the, the U.S. military Lamat mission, Mr. Speaker. Our infectious disease, we piloted HIV self-testing in collaboration with Caribbean Med Labs Foundation. That was a success, and we hope to continue this, Mr. Speaker. So Dr. Gail Kajada, Mr. Speaker, a very quiet lady, soft-spoken, but very profound in her work, Mr. Speaker, providing further training in HIV and syphilis rapid testing with her team, and commence the f we're looking at the commencement of fixed dose combination medications for tuberculosis, for tuberculosis management. So, Mr. Speaker, when we speak about when we speak about universal health care, universal health care. The last time the member for Miku South and the leader of, oppos of the opposition shouted across the room, "What is universal health care? You, you need to talk about health insurance." When a former Prime Minister asks you what is universal health care, I just hope nobody from the international community heard that, you know, Mr. Speaker. A former Prime Minister said, what is universal health care? It is very clear, Mr. Speaker, that he was lost as Prime Minister. He does not know the fundamentals of building a health care system, and that is why they failed, Mr. Speaker. That is why they failed miserably with their policies. And when we speak about universal health care, this time, we know a lot of work was done before, I will demonstrate to you that this time we're not only just talking about universal health care. Lots of actions have been put in place. And if you speak, Mr. Speaker, for a little while, maybe over coffee, to Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, who's the head and director of our universal health care program, 
you will understand what is happening. Tremendous amount of work has been done with the team. We established the Universal Healthcare Unit as a project in August of last year. We were not just leaving it as a program of the, in the ministry. We wanted to give it direction. We wanted to give it leadership. And so we employed a director of universal health care with some limited support staff, which we hopefully will increase later on. We employed a communication specialist to ensure that the universal health care had legs, Mr. Speaker. The unit has done tremendous work with strong support from the Universal Healthcare Working Group and many professionals in St. Lucia who have worked alongside the team. Again, I wish to say, Mr. Speaker, everything is not starting from scratch. We are not reinventing all of the wheels. But what I can tell you is that we are on a path which will deliver universal healthcare to St. Lucia, albeit in a phased way, but we are on a path, and I will tell you exactly what will happen and to show you how the 2.5% levy for health and security will assist us with in paying for some of these services. What have we done, Mr. Speaker? The drafting of the white paper is ongoing, and the white paper is a roadmap. We've had other papers before, but this time with assistance from the World Bank, we are working hard on the health system strengthening project. We are working hard to deliver this. Also, Mr. Speaker, we have looked again at the essential package of health services. Which health services should we include in a basket of services? Some work was done on it before. We have looked at the work. That work is completed. And we have given it to an actuarial consultancy to make sure everything fits well and we should get the results soon. We are going to launch maternal and child health services as the first, as the first tangible result of our universal health care program. And in this budget, Mr. Speaker, the, the Minister for Finance has allocated $1.8 million to do this. And what does it mean? What does this mean, Mr. Speaker? What does it mean? It means that we are going to provide additional services of labs, ultrasounds, investigations at the primary care level to improve St. Lucia's perinatal outcomes. It means, Mr. Speaker, that the ladies who get pregnant in St. Lucia when this program is launched will get the labs, will get the investigations and the necessary ultrasounds to ensure that we have safe delivery and healthy deliveries. Why did we, why did we choose this? We realized, Mr. Speaker, that over the last 10 years, we've been having challenges with our births. Still births, um, some parents, unfortunately, over the last few years have, have, have passed away. And there are issues we are noticing over the years, when we look at the data over the last 10 years, we are noticing that a number of pregnant um, ladies well, a number of pregnant um, women, they do not access health care because it is too expensive for them. They have to go for the labs, the, the blood tests, they have to pay for it. The ultrasounds and a number of these services have to be paid for. So we have selected this. It is direct. We have the data. We know what we are doing. There are over a little over 2,100 ladies who get pregnant in St. Lucia every year over the last 10 years. We have the data. We have costed the services. Mr. Speaker, we have had discussions with the providers of the services. And the providers of the services are not only the public sector. Because you cannot have a successful universal health care program if you don't incorporate your private sector. So we are also talking to the private sector, meaning the private labs and so forth. So a lot of work has been done. We have proposals. They are discussing with the labs and so on, proposals for the payments. So this is on track, and we are going to deliver the maternal and child care services as part of our universal health care delivery. Mr. Speaker, under universal health care, registration and issuance of health cards, we are working with the Health System Strengthening Project to ensure that we register and provide health cards to the whole population. 
And I know some people have said, what's the sense of doing this? Why would you provide a health card to the population? It's very important because this health card, Mr. Speaker, will tie in to our health system, our, our health system, um, our information system on health in St. Lucia, SLUIS, and it will assist us in providing the service. While all of the services for universal health care will not be available now, the services that will be available, we are going to issue the health cards and ensure that they are being used while we wait for the other services to come on board and then we are going to issue health cards. So we are not issuing thousands of health cards to just anybody as yet. We are doing it in a phased way. The experience in the other countries have told us that it is better if we're doing diabetes and hypertension as we will be doing with the performance-based financing project. Then you register those people who are in the diabetes and hypertension, give them the health card. We'll be doing maternal and child health care services. We'll register the pregnant mothers so they have the health card. They can swipe it. They can use it in other facilities. Cancer screening and early detection. Mr. Speaker, we are hoping that by September of this year, we'll start work on this part of the Universal Health Care Project, which is cancer screening for prostate, breast, colon, and so on. A major deliverable for us is a cancer registry, which has been elusive for a while. And I know Dr. Remy, if she's listening, will say, I'm waiting for it, I've been waiting for a long time. And the St. Lucia Cancer Society, Faces of Cancer, and they, they've been doing a lot of work in, in that area, Mr. Speaker, and we, this year we are going to work on it. The communications aspect of the universal health care, Mr. Speaker, you have seen a lot of it already. We are developing a communications plan, communications programs just for universal health care. There was a survey and, you know, we have a unit and pushing the message of universal health care headed by Ms. Jade Brown and her team. So, Mr. Speaker, we are moving ahead with universal health care purposefully, but at the same time, strengthening our health facilities and strengthening our services all around the country. What about elder care services? I have spoken about the elderly homes and the, 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 the dental programs which we have started. We have worked with the government of Taiwan with kitchen gardens, on kitchen gardens for the elderly. We have gone to Comfort Bay Senior Citizens Home and provided equipment for the, for the Comfort Bay Senior Citizens Home. But we have a new initiative this year. The Prime Minister and Minister for Finance has agreed, Mr. Speaker, that we are going to initiate a service which we will call the Golden 80 Plus Health Package. The Golden 80 Plus Health Package. Mr. Speaker, we know that the value of pharmaceuticals, which, which is provided to St. Lucians who are 80 years or older, is about 1.684 million 200, sorry, 1.684 234, one, sorry, let me repeat this. $1,684,234. That is what we spend to provide medicines from our primary facilities, the health centers, the public hospitals, and so on, to individuals who are 80 years or older. We know that because we have the databases and so on. 1.684 million. Out of that, we spend $250,000 for diabetes and hypertension medication, which is free. So they don't pay for that. However, Mr. Speaker, our information suggests that $1.4 million, $1,433,700, dollars is paid for out of pocket by individuals 80 years and over. So individuals, our residents who are 80 years and over, pay to the primary care facilities $1,433,763 in medication. So it means if you are 80 years or older, you have to pay 
although you'll get diabetes and hypertension medication free. So you still have to pay for some medication. Starting this year, Mr. Speaker, and we are going to announce a date, all St. Lucians who are 80 years or older will no longer pay for medication or pharmaceuticals at our primary care facilities as long as they are available. So you will not have to pay any money for pharmaceuticals. Sanuka de Mr. Speaker, nous n'y a département pour pour Guamun. Avec gouvernement, ça là c'est un gouvernement qui a fait bagarre pour Guamun. Avec tout le monde à payer cette ici. Nous avons qui les gens qui quatre l'année en montant aller à ces health centers ou bien l'hôpital, ils ont payé 1.56 million de dollars en Wimed. Mais à dans ces Wimed là, le gouvernement a payé 250 millions mille dollars à Wimed diabetes et high blood pressure par comme ça. Mais là nous garder les mots nous, c'est grand monde ni pour payer monde qui quatre vingt l'année en haut, ni pour payer toujours 1.4 million de dollars en Wimed. Ça, gouvernement, qu'a fait Ça, gouvernement, on est à Philippe Djepier, Premier ministre, là, qu'a fait C'est nous qui dit, commencer l'année, ça, là, et nous qui annoncé en date. Depuis, ou 4 20 l'année, ou bien plus, ou pas qu'à payer pour pièces, oui, mais, en pièces, health center, pièces, l'hôpital public, à cette ici, depuis, nous, ni, oui, mais, là, là. Nous qui avons dit, nous allons commencer. Nous allons pour mener un ID cadeau pour nous tuer ou nous tuer l'année. Parce que l'année, nous allons tuer l'année et nous allons garder après de 5 ans l'année. Mais nous allons pour nous tuer l'année. So this is a new initiative, Mr. Speaker. Bravo, bravo, bravo. We continue on our policy for older persons and also on the creation of the elder care unit. We are in discussions with the Ministry of the Public Service and this, based on the documents which I have seen, will come soon. We are increasing the capacity of the Comfort Bay, all the citizens' home. It has a capacity, it has a, a, a capacity way above the number of individuals we have there now, and so we are going to reorganize it to take more people. We continue, Mr. Speaker, to strengthen the supply of our health services. We are, we are creating, Mr. Speaker, what we call centers of excellence. And again, the last time the Member of Parliament from Miku South and the Leader of the Opposition suggested that it didn't make much sense because it is better to have doctors go all around the country to all the health centers than to have centers of excellence and for people to travel. Well, Mr. Speaker, my, my job, my, my role in this job is very simple. When the Prime Minister told me, you are going to do this job, I have a very simple way of assessing things. You put plans in place, you measure it against outcomes. It's not about bava, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. You know? So, Mr. Speaker, what is a center of excellence? What we are saying is that we do not have the money to have specialist doctors to go all around St. Lucia in all 33 health centers every month, every week, and so on. We don't have the money to do it. And even though we have the money, we may not have the professionals who are available to do it. So what we are doing, we are concentrating certain services in some of our wellness centers. The regular services continue. It's not as if you don't have the regular services anymore, but we are concentrating some services. And we have started with the Miku Wellness Center, and the head of Region 4, Dr. Shanda Haraksing, I'm sure can tell you a little more about that. But let me just tell you something quickly about results. And that is what I like, results. Verifiable results, Mr. Speaker. When we converted the, designated the Miku Wellness Center as a center of excellence, we saw a marked increase in the number of individuals who access specialist services. In 2022, no one, there was no, we had no dental services there, the whole of 2022. Between January and, and, and now, of 2023, we have had 117 clients going to the Miku Wellness Center for dental services. They never had dental services before. Well, the regular medical services, they are now seeing from 400 in 2022, they are now seeing 633. Casualty, 437, is around the same, 477. Internal medicine, internal medicine, 
15 in 2022. Now they're seeing 155. And that's January to now. Okay? We have um, others like, like antenatal, postnatal, and so on, from 61 to 92. Men's health, nephrology, and others, none in 2022 because we did not have that program. But when we designated MIKO as a center of excellence, so far, 63 men have accessed the services and they are coming back. So, Mr. Speaker, very clearly, this shows that we have increased access, which is what universal health care is about. Increased access and increased quality of services, dental services, and so on. The other wellness centers will come on board, like the Ancillary Wellness Center, Mr. Speaker. We're going to focus on sexual and reproductive health, and also awareness of the snake bite, snake bite and so on, snake bite education. The Viewford Wellness Center and others. Mr. Speaker, to expand our services, we are going to establish the Cassidy's Urban Polyclinic. And if you speak to Nurse Bernadette Regis and her team, you will know the kinds of issues they are having in that region, Mr. Speaker. The present Castries Wellness Center is no longer fit for purpose. It has structural problems and it has situational constraints. The hours of service need to be extended at least to midnight, Mr. Speaker, to include services on weekends and holidays. We also, Mr. Speaker, need to cause non-emergency services to go to the urban polyclinic instead of the accident and emergency department of the Owen King E Hospital. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, it is estimated by the OKEU that 50% of the cases that come to A&E, accident and emergency, can be classified as non-emergency, non-emergency care. Somebody burst their toe, somebody... Now, be, now I, you can't blame them, because be something they have nowhere else to go. So if you burst your toe midnight and it's bleeding and so on, you cannot go to the Cassius Wellness Center. You go to accident and emergency. So there's a backlog. When we establish the Cassius Urban Polyclinic, we are going to ensure that it goes at least up to midnight and in the future, 24 hours, so that those cases can go there and free up the accident and emergency um, area at Owen King EU Hospital. Again, Mr. Speaker, while we are focusing on universal health care, that's our goal, you know, remember that. In the manifesto on page 20, you'll see it there. A big goal of our government is to establish universal health care. We are big on that. But while we are doing that, we are strengthening all the services everywhere as best as, as, best as we can. And we are going to reestablish the Larissus Wellness Center, Mr. Speaker. If you, if you speak to Nurse Enda Antoine in that region, nous avons vie oui bâti health center la rue là parce que nous voulons by peace service dans toutes ces régions and we have spoken about souffre and i'm sure nurse alexander at souffre will be pleased to hear about the possible the developments there at souffre mr speaker another very important development in our strategy and in our work is to ensure that we centralize the processes of maintenance when I became minister, Mr. Speaker, all of the complaints, and I went to the health centers, I saw certain things, Mr. Speaker, some, some of them are heartbreaking, certain things, very simple things, a door lock, a door knob, and I say, Mr. Minister, we've been asking for that for so long, a, a lock that costs $45 and so on. It's not that they don't want to fix it, but there was no proper system of maintenance, regular maintenance, Mr. Speaker. And so our biomedical engineer, Mr. Polion, leads a team which we have put together and they are at the respiratory hospital. And what they are doing, Mr. Speaker, we have technical staff to undertake maintenance work. We have plumber, an electrician, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technician so that they go around the health centers in a regular um, way, Mr. Regular system to ensure that our systems are in place. As a result of the new focus, Mr. Speaker, you know what happened last year? 
And I wonder when the, when the members opposite criticize us, I wonder what was happening, whether they didn't know all of this. Let me tell you what happened last year, Mr. Speaker. Just last year, as a result of checking the equipment, going all around the country and checking, this government, out of central government, spent $1.2 million in the purchase of medical equipment in St. Lucia. $1.2 million just last year. St. Jude Hospital, $204,555. All kinds of analyzers, anesthesia machine, hematology analyzer, immunoassay analyzer, nurses clinics all around St. Lucia. We spent $911,500. The eye clinic, purchase of equipment for eye clinic, $89,541, Mr. Speaker. $1.2 million spent to replace medical equipment. Now, if we do not have a system of checking the equipment, repairing them, ensuring that they're in top shape, we would not have the situations which, we, which we've had from time to time, when surgeries cannot be performed, when basic procedures cannot be performed. And it's because the last government failed to look at the basic things in healthcare. Now, I'm not saying we have done all. We have a lot of work to do. I get calls all the time from the health centers. They are missing this. They are missing that. Okay? Things like fetal heart monitors, vital signs monitors, Mr. Speaker, urine analyzers. We've placed those bits of equipment or pieces of equipment all around the health centers. We have a lot to do. So as a result of this focus, Mr. Speaker, we are able to alleviate a number of the problems. So nurses like Nurse Philippia Donnelly of Bellevue and Marilyn Liaison of Grace, the supervisor for Region 5, Nurse Jasmine Daniel, Shirley Nurse Shirley Ann Lamontine in Region 6, Nurse Simon Solomon, Nurse Yasmin Gabriel, Nurse Beverly Joseph Samuel Babuno, Nurse Jamie Raphael, Morgan Raphael, all of these people are leading teams, Mr. Speaker, all around St. Lucia in the health centers to ensure that our work is done and to ensure that the people of St. Lucia are safe. We continue to strengthen public health emergency preparedness. And Mrs. Jeanette Hughes leads a, a wonderful team in the health system strengthening project of the World Bank, Mr. Speaker. And they have delivered so many positive things in the health sector. They have helped to improve our database management. They have helped to improve communication, supply of personal protective equipment, infrared thermometers, universal transport kit, viral transport kit, supply of vehicles to the various departments, and so forth. The OECS Regional Health Project of the World Bank, similar, they are the ones responsible for some of the smarting of our wellness centers, and a number of wellness centers have been, have been visited, and Slare being one of them, and there are many others, and also radio communication, and so forth. Mr. Speaker, the Pan American Health Organization, very critical to our work, and the UNICEF Technical Cooperation Team, they are assisting us to strengthen our system post-COVID-19. And they have assisted us, Mr. Speaker, with HIV, TB, and hepatitis um, training. They have assisted us with communicable diseases, vector management, and uh, Mr. Ragunanan and the Environmental Health Department is doing a wonderful work. That department, Mr. Speaker, all throughout St. Lucia, doing, uh, doing wonderful work and they are starved of the kind of resources that they need. And we are going to ensure we try to assist them. Health system and services, Mr. Speaker. Vaccination, card monitoring, and strengthening the systems with vaccination. Vaccine safety and surveillance. So all of these things, Mr. Speaker, are happening while... These things are happening, Mr. Speaker, while we are trying to roll out our main objective which is the delivery of universal health care. Universal health coverage, Mr. Speaker. Member for Viewfort North, you have 10 minutes left. That's 15 minutes. 
Member for Denry North. Mr. Speaker, I move for the invocation of Standing Order 3210 to allow the member for Fifort North an additional 15 minutes within which to complete his presentation. Honourable Members, the question is that Standing Order 3210 be invoked to allow the member for Viewfort North an additional 15 minutes in which to complete his presentation. I now put the question, as many as of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of a country opinion say no. If the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Proceed, member. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, honorable members, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, Madagadiki universal health care coverage, sir. Gouvernement, le noute, le, le noute en opposition, nous avons dit que universal health coverage est important. Et qui ça, ça y est? Ça veut dire que nous pouvons développer un système qui a pris un temps, mais nous pouvons commencer à délivrer un système côté jean pays cest qui si, a payé moins pour service, exprimer un service important, qu'un service de diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, avec ces problèmes, ça là, dialysis. Tous ces problèmes ça qui a affecté nous. Avec nous commencer un gouvernement qui a gardé Universal Health Care, avec nous a fait un chai bagay. Nous a fait bagay un uh, health center Miku, côté un chai nom à présent, nous sommes allés à, 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 à la clinique en Miku, l'année dentiste, avec nous avons fait un différent health center en cette ici. Ça nous a dit assez. Le gouvernement cette ici, pas ni tout l'argent pour payer tout spécialiste. Pour aller tout partout au lieu de cette liste. C'est ça l'idée de l'opposition qui a dit. Mettez les spécialistes tout partout, puis tout le monde vient à ce centre d'excellence. Nous avons dit à présent, nous ne pouvons pas marcher petit pas, petit pas, avec faire des choses plus meilleures. Et que nous avons fait plus bon, nous avons fait plus bon. Quand ça a été tué, c'est le mot qui a été plus de monde, plus de nombre, ça a été fait pour les plus de nombre, ça a été fait parce que nous n'avons pas de là qui pas de loin. Et les gens qui ont accès à la Miku Wellness Center, Mr. Speaker, la plupart d'entre eux sont from the south of the island, south-east of the island. Miku, um, Miku South, um, Viewfort North, Viewfort South, Pralin, Denry North, et so on. It is easier for them to get to the Miku Wellness Center. And we will do this in key areas all around the island. We have spoken about ancillary. We have spoken about Viewfort, and we are going to select, look, we are refurbishing the Denry, the Larry Schuss Wellness Center, and we, we will go up to Babuno and these other areas, the main areas, with the health facilities that can support specialized services. Again, our aim is to expose and to give access. Universal healthcare is about access, reducing cost, quality, Equity. So as long as we are achieving these things, Mr. Speaker, we will move forward. Mr. Speaker, the overall, the overall objective, as, I, as I've said, is to pursue UHC, Universal Health Care, and we continue to take action, to work with our teams, to strengthen the supply of health services, to refurbish key health facilities, centralize the maintenance programs, strengthen public health preparedness, strengthen policies for elderly care. In this year's budget, Mr. Speaker, provisions have been made for Cuban nationals to continue to assist us with our medical um, requirements in terms of health professionals being available. I want to take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, in a special way, to thank the government and people of Cuba, Mr. Speaker. They have been at our side. They have been with us. Through thick and through thin, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Cuban ambassador, and I want to thank the head of the, the medical brigade. Also, Mr. Speaker, so we are going to continue to employ Cuban professionals. As I said before, $1.8 million has been allocated for the Universal Health Care Project. And, Mr. Speaker, the Member of Parliament for Castries East and Prime Minister has 
put his money where his mouth is, so to speak. He said to us that healthcare is a major priority for the government, not only for this year, but for his administration on the whole. And what has he done? He has increased grants and contributions and also subventions to various organizations and hospitals in St. Lucia by 10%. In fact, grants, contributions, and subventions increased by $7 million in this year's budget. By $7 million, Mr. Speaker, a $3 million increase in the subvention to the St. Jude Hospital. $3.6 million increase in the subvention to the Millennium Heights Complex, which includes the Owen King E Hospital. A $10,000 increase in the subvention to the Diabetic and Hypertensive Association. A $20,000 increase to cater for the Childhood Development Center. $10,000 to the Autism Society. $20,000 to the Cerebral Palsy, Associ Palsy Association. $300,000 increase to cater for medical assistance in this year's budget. And so, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has demonstrated that he's putting people first and increasing assistance for our healthcare needs. In the capital, Mr. Speaker, 12 million, 12.72 million dollars for one, the establishment of the urban polyclinic, 1.3 million dollars to assist St. Jude at the stadium to do some basic work, repair certain equipment, not equipment, sorry, repair certain parts of the facility while we complete the hospital at, at OG. 1.8 million dollars for the upgrade of the deteriorated hot water system at the Mental Wellness Center of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. $500,000 for the reconstruction of the Laurentius Wellness Center. Under the Health System Strengthening Project, $1.4 million and another $268,000 for the oxygen plant and also equipment. We are purchasing even more equipment under the OECS Regional Health Project of $1.7 million. So Mr. Speaker, this year, we intend to see significant improvement in the healthcare outcomes, both in terms of training for our health professionals, and a lot of training has been ongoing. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the hospitals, the CHUM hospitals in Martinique, who agreed to train nurses from the St. Jude Hospital and the Owen King Uyu Hospital. These nurses were in Martinique and the training is over and more professionals will go to Martinique for training. Mr. Speaker, it is not difficult to understand why the members opposite will have problems with this budget. It's not difficult to understand, Mr. Speaker, because, Mr. Speaker, the language is not one of growth. The language, it has been demonstrated, Mr. Speaker, that the members opposite, members of the opposition, are not inclined to any debates. Not inclined to any debates. Their history, Mr. Speaker, is laced with insults, calling people jackasses at all turns, whether it be on the campaign trail or whether it be when they are in opposition. That is the DNA, Mr. Speaker. They will not discuss the evidence in this budget. Mr. Speaker, it's not difficult to understand why the leader of the opposition will have falfwet. And you will see in his presentation, it's a lot of falfwet and accusations and shouting because what he cannot argue with Mr. Speaker is that real GDP growth under the member of parliament for Castries East and Prime Minister is 18.1% Mr. Speaker. He cannot argue 
with that. No matter how high he jumps, no matter how, how much he shouts, Mr. Speaker, he cannot argue that the lowest unemployment since 2010 has been achieved by the Member of Parliament for Castries and the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. No matter what he says, he cannot argue that the overall deficit declined from 5.5% of GDP in 2021 to 1.5% of GDP in 2023. And no matter what he says, no matter all the posturing, Mr. Speaker, he cannot argue that the current balance improved. He cannot argue with the increase in public assistance of $25.9 million, the highest ever, Mr. Speaker. So while they say all what they say, the member of parliament for Castries East is the same one, they, they, they call him all kinds of names. They said he can't speak well. How will he manage a country? They said he's going to fail. All kinds of things they said about him. The derogatory things I'll not even say. All kinds of things. But today, Mr. Speaker, today, today, the member of parliament for Castries East has demonstrated that he does not, he doesn't have to, he, he doesn't have to showboat, Mr. Speaker, like they were showboating. He doesn't have to do that. He is the leader of a cabinet with members and ministers. We put our shoulders to the wheel and we do the hard work for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. That's what it is. It's about jobs. I think the Prime Minister said it a while ago. When they said J, they were so flustered. They didn't realize it's unemployment that going on, so it's jobs the Prime Minister created. So I took it from him. So, so while they're trying to deny great the Prime Minister, and they're saying that J is for this, the people who are benefiting and working as a result of the policies of this Prime Minister, while they're shouting on TV, they're just they're saying jobs, PJP jobs, 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 PJP jobs, PJP jobs. They can't deal with it, Mr. Speaker. So where is the lockbox? Where is the lockbox? When they're trying to challenge our performance and the performance of the member for Castries X, where is the lockbox? Where is the DSH? And while they talk about the 2.5% levy for health and security, you recall, Mr. Speaker, before the elections, they came with a host of hidden taxes. You remember that? Tax on charcoal. You remember that? You remember that? Tax on if you're going to fish by the by the sea near the airport in Viewfort. They, had a, they were proposing a tax on that. I slowly. All kinds of taxes, Mr. Speaker. These people, they cannot argue with, with what the Prime Minister has done. And they are shocked. They are shell-shocked. So they're trying to hook on to the 2.5%. Oh, it's a VAT. It's, it's, a, it's a VAT. They, they call it environmental levy. All kind of thing they call it. <laughs> but, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has demonstrated that he can manage this economy far better than the member opposite did. Far better than him. The Prime Minister is a man for this time, Mr. Speaker, to take us out of the rut which we were left in by the Member of Parliament for Miku South. And the Prime Minister has done it while assisting the poor, while giving social assistance to the needy and the vulnerable, while taking care of the elderly. Look at our 80 plus golden program and so many other programs, Mr. Speaker. You know what? They can't test him. Premier Minister La Ivini Eveki Wange Economia. Travail à présent, mon qui pas qu'à travailler, l'IMO a descend plus bas l'IMO depuis 2010. Premier ministre a quitté ni plus bon performance en économie, M. Speaker. Ce n'est pas ça à dire avec ça. Il y a créé tout le monde qui non, Dieu. Moi, dit Dieu, c'est Jobs. Jobs qui Dieu. Et il n'y a pas ça à dire avec le Premier ministre. Comme ça, il y a créé vieux non. Vieux non, pas qu'à faire. And you know, it's the attitude that they still have, Mr. Speaker. 
You know, in all of my debates in the parliament, when we were in opposition, in all of my arguments about the economic policy, it's really the, the attitude, the attitude with which they govern, and up to now in opposition, you know, the attitude. You will leave a neo allegiance at Lissi. You will leave a neo aleno. Akadi, Nupakai fe, Nupasa fe, Premier Minister Philip J. Pierre, Pasa fe to Baikosa. Exit lay fe to Baila. You can fe akadi say, Yoki Premier Minister. Yoki Premier Minister. You will parler lay of lay. You will faire sa of lay. May you pa Premier Minister, Mr. Speaker. The member of parliament for cash resist is a man for this time. I support the appropriation bill. And Mr. Speaker, Thanks to my colleagues, thanks to my team at the ministry, Ms. Jenny Daniel, the permanent secretary, a very hard-working woman, Mr. Speaker, my secretary, Ms. Magdalene. Thanks to all the team of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs. And I could not do it without the support of my family, Mr. Speaker, and the support of my team at my parliamentary office. Ms. Kedu, Ms. Shomian Popi, Mr. Lincoln Francis, and all the teams on the local level. They understand, Mr. Speaker, that we have a lot of work to do in health and in the rest of the economy. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I support this bill wholeheartedly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.